the ICT instrument is designed to connect to a variety of sensors. This is the instrument. These are some of the sensors that we use, such as soil moisture, soil tension, soil oxygen, and a variety of others. Today I'd like to talk to you about a particular feature of the ICT instrument, which is to do with calibration of the channels. In an ideal world, all of the sensors that we use would produce exactly the same results for a particular value. But of course, the reality is that they don't. They vary, and we have to find a way to deal with that. In the way that we are able to do it with the ICT instrument is to be able to calibrate each channel to a known standard. Of course, as part of that, you need to have a standard or a reference point to work with so that you can then adjust or calibrate the sensors to meet that standard and produce the same results every time. This feature of the ICT instrument sets it apart from other devices of a similar nature. And we do this within the software on the ICT instrument. In this video, we'll look at the process involved in calibrating the individual channel of the ICT instrument to a known reference. What we will do is we will take a particular sensor that's connected to the instrument and we will place that sensor into a standard or reference point and take a measurement and then calculate a calibration factor that we will use to calibrate the sensor. And the first step is to confirm that the instrument is in manual measurement mode. That's the only mode that we can use to do a calibration, which so we find that yes, it's in manual mode. So we're ready to go ahead and start the calibration. And we notice that on channel one, the channel we intend to use, that the measurement results window is a different color. A darker shade of green that indicates that we actually already have a calibration done on channel one. However, we don't wish to use that calibration, so we will do a new calibration. So we go to the calibration section. We select channel one as the channel we intend to use, and we notice that there is a calibration slope, which is a factor applies a correction value to the results. We don't wish to use that so we will clear that and we confirm that yes we intend to clear that and channel 1 that calibration has been removed and we're ready to do a fresh calibration. And we first of all have to start the calibration process we're on channel 1 and the calibration slope is a factor of 1 which means there is no variation so we are starting with a fresh calibration. And for this particular sensor we are able to use the fact that at a zero moisture content it would produce zero output so we will use that as our first entry into the calibration table and we click on the little pencil icon up here and we confirm that we're able to manually enter calibration values and we can enter into here's a measured value of zero and a calibration value of zero we can add those to the calibration table and that becomes our first entry to do a reliable calibration we actually need three sets of values to use 
and that's our first set. And the second set we will actually take a measurement and we start the process and the instrument connects to the particular sensor and takes a measurement in our reference soil that we're using and it's come up with a measured value of 25.56 and in this particular case we know that that is slightly low and the actual true value is a value of 26 which we will enter into the calibration value and add that to a calibration table and that then gives us a factor of how far away from the standard our, our test sensor is working. Uh, we know that we can see that it's reading slightly low and we do a simple arithmetic calculation using those values to find that the sensor is reading 1.7% low. So we'll use that, that factor to produce our third set of values. So what we'll do now is we'll actually manually enter a third set of values. So we once again go up to our pencil icon and we're able to enter manually enter values. So we will put in the value of around about 96 and use that that uh, relationship we have found earlier to have a corrected value of 97.65 we add that to our calibration and that then becomes our calibration table which the software will used to apply a factor to the measurements obtained from this sensor. Well, having done that we then hit the calibrate button and we notice that the software has produced a calibration curve starting at zero and has a slope or correction factor of 1.7 percent. If we're happy with that we hit the use or if we feel it's not correct we can go back and do the process again. So in this case we'll use that and we have a confirmation that we have a slope and intercept values for channel 1. We say yes we will use that and we notice up here that this those figures have been entered into here for channel 1. We've now finished that so we can say stop calibration and the channel is now calibrated and we see down in our dialog box down here that the calibration value for channel 1 is saved OK so we have confirmation of that we can go back to our instrument tab and we notice here that channel 1 the results value is a darker green as an indication that that channel has a special correction factor or calibration factor applied to it and the final step to confirm what's happening is that we do a, we actually take a measurement from the sensor and confirm that the results that we get are what we expect to see and if we're happy with that we can see down here in the dialog that the new value that the sensor is measuring and if that's correct we are finished